What's going on guys, Fuller here from Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on the YouTube. And now if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you're looking to pick up your first set of wheels or maybe just a new set of wheels or maybe you're a veteran in the industry and you've been doing this forever, but you just love watching our videos and we really appreciate you for doing that. So if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on everything that we do and all the videos that we make. So to jump right into it then, uh, it's kind of some tips and tricks for buying your first set of wheels. So right off the bat, I think one of the most important things that people overlook or look past when they're trying to buy new wheels and tires is that they kind of forget about the tires because everybody's focused on the wheels, what they look like, what styles they're going to run, how big they want to go, and it's easy to forget that tires are really important. So I know for me personally, I probably stress this more than the other guys do, but the reason why tires are so important is because it's the only thing that's connecting your vehicle to the ground. That's your contact patch. So we're not going to get into the specifics of what tire you should run, but it all depends basically on where you live, you know, your climate, how you use your truck, what type of driving you do, because there's tires out there that are made for purely summer street use that go uh, all the way to the opposite end of the spectrum that are made for mud bogging, or there's ones in between that are designed better for winter driving. So. It not only are those, those different types of tires, but there's also different brands. We sell a ton of different wheels and tires on the website, and you'll see some brands that you might not have heard of before, or you'll see some that are significantly cheaper than the others and wonder, are those a good tire? Now, the answer is, a tire is a tire to some extent, and you get what you pay for, but those cheaper tires, the reason why so many people run them is because you can get into the game for a way less price or maybe you don't drive your truck all that often or it's just a show vehicle where your tires aren't as important or you don't put a ton of miles on. Or if you're like me, you get a new vehicle every year. So if the tires only last you a year, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna be buying a new set of wheels and tires for the next vehicle next year anyways. So like I was saying before, there's a ton of different tires on the market and we actually have videos describing almost every single one of them. The most popular option right now is a hybrid tire. So a hybrid is a cross between your all-terrain tire or an AT and your mud tire or an MT. So the hybrid takes the best of both worlds and kind of puts them together into one. So with that hybrid, you're getting good mileage out of them, but you don't have the road noise that you have with the mud tires, but they are more aggressive than the all-terrain tires, so you still get that mud tire look, again, without having the road noise, and they just last longer. So the Toyo Open Country RT is one of our favorite uh, hybrid tires, but we also do love the Nitto Ridge Grappler. It's basically the same thing, but on the Nitto Ridges, you can get like E-load and F-load tires, depending on sizes, but um, something really good if you're, you know, if you got a 2500 HD or 3500, or if you're just running a 1500 and you do a lot of towing, you know, something to look into is those tires. When you're shopping for tires, you also want to keep in mind the sizes so that you can better understand what's going on. Now, most truck tires that you see are a standard size. It's 35 by 12 and a half R20. So the 35 is pretty simple. That's just your overall diameter of the tire. The second number, the 12.5 or 1250, that's the width, so that's how wide your tire is. Again, pretty simple to understand. And then the R20, or just the 20 at the end, kind of depends on the manufacturer, how they put it. That's gonna be your wheel diameter, so the size of the opening inside the tire that your wheel fits into. That's all pretty easy to understand. Where it gets confusing is metric tire sizes. So you'll see something laid out where it's like 305, 50, R22, or R20. That 305 is basically your traction path or your width in millimeters. The middle number is an aspect ratio for the sidewall. So it's, it's a ratio of the width for how tall the sidewall is. So it gets kind of confusing there. And then the last number, again, is, is very simple. That's just the opening inside the tire where your wheel fits. So if you have a 20 inch wheel, you need an R20. The first two numbers can get really confusing. Like I was kind of explaining, you might fall behind there, but you don't need to really know them too well because on our website, if you're using the gallery to figure out what fits on your vehicle at customoffsets.com forward slash gallery, scroll down a little bit, it'll list the metric tire size and then right underneath that, it lists out the standard conversion so that it doesn't get too confusing for you. I hope I didn't give you too many numbers there, but moving on to the next section then. So if you've been on Instagram or you've been to SEMA or you've seen photos of SEMA, you know that everybody right now is running wheels that stick out super far. And people often ask, how do I get that? How do I achieve that look? And this is where offset comes into play. Now, just because you have offset wheels doesn't mean they're gonna stick out really far. In fact, every wheel has a measure of offset. So an offset is basically the distance that that center pad where your wheel bolts to your truck is moved either forward or back and that creates either positive or negative offset which pushes the wheel out or in. So a really common size is a 20 by 12 negative 44. 
that negative 44 is gonna push your wheel further outside of the fender, which is all fine and dandy if that's the look that you're going for. But you also have to keep in mind, the more negative offset you go, the further your wheel is out, which can create some rubbing problems on either your front bumper or the back of that front fender. And that's where something like the NorCal mod comes into play, where you go in there, cut it up, remove a whole bunch of metal to get that clearance. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're buying something that is just gonna replace your OEM wheels or you want something that's aggressive but doesn't stick out so far so you can protect your paint, that's when people are buying like a 10 wide negative 24. It sticks out maybe an inch to two inches, all depends on the truck, but just to give you a rough idea. Now, it's a 10 wide, so not only is it narrower than the 12 wide, but it also has less offset, so it's not sticking out as far. And then to the way opposite end of the spectrum, you could get uh, nine wide, which has a zero offset. So that center pad is directly in the middle of the wheel. So it's not pushing it out this way or the other way. It's just the nine inches of width and it's pretty straightforward. So you could take that same wheel and nine wides come in a variety of different offsets. If you have a negative offset, like I said, it's gonna be pushing it out. Zero offset, it's set up perfectly straight. And then the positive offset pulls it in. And you also have to be worried about that positive offset because if you have your wheel too far sucked inside your wheel well and you go with a plus size tire, something that's bigger than factory, you could run into issues where if you're turning, you're gonna rub on inner components. So like your control arms or tie rods. So just something to keep in mind. We've actually made the gallery on our website kind of for this reason, so that people can figure out what fits their vehicle and then get it right on the first time so you're not guessing and trying to figure out what's going to fit. So you can just plug in your year make model uh, if you're running any sort of suspension, either up or down, you can plug that in and then you can see what fits your vehicle. If you do order wheels and then they don't look quite how you want and they're not out there as far, there is an option to fix that. So you could get hub centric spacers. We do sell those on the website too. Um, but again, it's really important just to kind of understand that offset and that way you can get it right on the first time and you're not spending any extra money. On that same topic though, if you get spacers and you stick them out too far, now you get back to running into the issues with clearance on your fenders and your bumpers. If you're looking to pick up a new set of wheels from customoffsets.com, I feel that it's important to know your brands and know about the different types of wheels that are out there. So the biggest ones that you're going to hear are forged wheels, cast wheels, and rotary forged wheels. You'll see a forged wheel and it's gonna be really expensive and then you'll see a cast wheel and they are more affordable and then these rotary forged guys are pretty new to the scene and they're kinda of right in the middle. So a forged wheel, is a fully forged one piece of aluminum that's been fully forged and then cut basically into the design of your wheel, which is why these things are super expensive. Not only is it the material, but it's the man hours and the labor that go into creating these wheels. A cast wheel is simply molten metal that's poured into a mold and basically these factories can just keep cranking out wheels. So that's why the cost is a little bit lower on those. Now your forged wheel is also gonna be more strong, but they also are usually pretty heavy. Whereas your cast wheels, though not light by any means, can be lighter than forged wheels. However, they're not quite as strong, but it's nothing to be discouraged by because I would say 90% of people are running cast wheels and they're perfectly fine for your daily driver or even if you do any mild off-roading, usually the cast wheels hold up just fine. The rotary forged wheels are a blend of both. So the center is cast and the outside is cast initially also, but then it's put on this machine where it spins super, super fast. And basically there's a blade that pulls the metal across. So by doing so, they've basically squished that molecular structure together to create a stronger wheel. And in most cases, they're also lighter. Now there's not a ton of companies on the market that are doing that right now. The only name in the truck market that I know of is Axe Off-Road. So if you wanna drop a whole bunch of cash and get on the gram and be Insta-famous, you gotta go with a forged wheel. But if you're looking for something a little more affordable, we actually do have a video where we list the top five wheels under $1,000, so you definitely wanna check that one out. So the next thing to consider when you're buying wheels and tires is to just understand the sizes and the measurements of different wheels. So the first one we're gonna talk about is diameter. This one's relatively simple. So you'll see your wheel, it's obviously a circle, and then the diameter is the distance from one point to the other directly across. So like a really common size is 20. It's probably the most common size in our gallery. Obviously you can run something smaller like 17s all the way up to like 26s if you're trying to ball for the gram. The next one that most people do understand is gonna be the width. So if you take your wheel, which is a circle, and you turned it sideways and it looks like this weird funky shape, the width is the distance from one side to the other across how wide it is. Those ones are pretty simple. Most people understand those. 
Where it gets tricky is offset and backspacing. Typically a stock vehicle is gonna have anywhere from like a plus 29 to a plus 40 offset. So like I mentioned before, that's gonna be those wheels that are, are tucked far in or they're sitting completely underneath the fender because that's what legal and that's what the manufacturers have to do. But if you want it to look good, that's where we come in. You pick up your new wheels and tires, we get them sitting flush or sticking further out or whatever your preference is. So the offset is just something to keep in mind if you wanted to figure out where your wheels are gonna sit, whether they're gonna be inside, flush, or outside. Where backspacing does matter is if you have a lift kit, you'll see on either our website or on the manufacturer's website, it'll say like a wheel with 4.5 inches of backspacing is required to fit this lift kit. And that's basically just so that the wheel doesn't end up hitting those components in the lift kit on the inside. You can also run into issues with wheel sizes if you go too small. So. If your truck comes with 20 inch wheels, we usually don't recommend to go less than 20 inches because the knuckles and everything are designed around that 20 inch wheel so that it clears you know, without rubbing anything. Now, if you go down to a 17, it might not clear the brake calipers or you might end up hitting it on those control arms or other things that are involved where the suspension comes basically down and into the wheel where it bolts up to your hub and you got the knuckle in there. Before you buy wheels and tires, it's important to think about your future plans and if you're gonna end up running a lift kit or a leveling kit because many wheel and tire sizes that you see, like if you bought a 20 by 12 with a 35, 12 and a half tire on it, that's not gonna fit on your stock truck, so you're, it's gonna require a lift kit in order to fit that. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for wheels and tires, and don't forget about suspension because that's another really important factor as far as what fits your vehicle. The last point I wanna make is just to remember some of the oddities that go into buying a wheel and tire package. Now, a lot of people will forget about TPMS, but the good news is if you buy your wheel and tire package from us, not only do we include mounting and balancing for free, but if you select the TPMX option, We'll get those put in there for you too. So they're installed, ready to go. We ship them to you, which is free in the lower 48 states. And then you literally just bolt them up and you're ready to go. You might have to reprogram your TPMS, but that's a super simple process. We have a ton of videos on TPMS and all the other things that go in the tire buying process on YouTube if you wanna check those out. Another thing that some people overlook is gonna be your lug nuts. So OEM lug nuts, 99.9999999% of the time, do not work with aftermarket wheels. We have a big disclaimer on the website if you're buying them that says aftermarket lug nuts are required. And it's not because we want to sell you lug nuts, it's simply because those stock lug nuts don't fit in the holes that the companies are drilling into the wheels. So you have to go with aftermarket lug nuts. There's a couple different styles. Some are splined, some are just standard, but they're you know, thinner so they don't take up so much space. There's locking lug nuts. Again, that's another thing that we dive further into on our YouTube channel if you wanna check those out. This is just supposed to be the quick basics to get you rolling on your first set of wheels or your new set of wheels. When you pick up new wheels and tires, obviously you're gonna to wanna to keep them looking clean. So we also do offer our own shine kit if you wanna check that out, customoffices.com forward slash shine. And the other thing to look into is ceramic coating. That's gonna protect your wheels from all the dirt and grime that's on our roads, or if you live where we live in Wisconsin, and they put a whole bunch of salt on the roads, it also helps create that extra layer of protection so you don't ruin your wheels. I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything that you need to know if you're looking to pick up your first set of wheels and tires, or buy a new set of wheels and tires, or you just like watching this video because you like my spiky hair or something. Check us out, customoffices.com. Peace.